30 books in three months. Let's go. Shout out to Reader Friends, Kathy McIsaac for sharing Jessica Brody's 30 books in three months reading challenge. All right, so my 30 books in three months challenge is really uh, something that I've embraced because I usually do the uh, book in a day by Donalyn Miller, who wrote the book Whisper. And I do typically average about 15 to 20 books a month. And so 30 books doesn't seem like in three months doesn't seem like a big deal. But I struggle with TBR piles. I struggle with staying focused on the books that I already own. And so my challenge this month or this summer while I'm off work is to really dive into the books that have been sitting on my shelves that I really, really want to read. And a few of them did just arrive, but that's, I kind of threw those in so that way I can keep myself current as well. And this summer I also hope to write. So this is a way to kind of ease that pressure of having to read, you know, a book a day while also trying to write. I think this will be, you know, 10 books a month will be a great relief. And I know I'll also read other books that are on my Kindle or I went to the library, so I might pick up one of those, but these are the books that I want to focus on and in three months be like, wow, look at what I read. And they're all books that are physically here with me. So, all right, let's see what I have chosen. Broken up into a couple categories. I have ARCs that are backlisted, so they've already been published. I have ARCs that are yet to be published. I have fantasy books, and I have non-fantasy books. So those are the main categories. So I'm gonna start with the backlisted ARCs, and um, these I'm gonna start with first are all books in verse. So the first book is Forever Is Now. This one came out just recently by Mariama J. Lockington, and she is, she holds a dear place in my heart because when I first started um, with my group, the Lit Review Crew, to review books and receive them from authors and we share them with each other, Mariama was the first one to send me a book. This was the first book that I read, and it, it wasn't this one, it was for black girls like me. Loved it, loved that book. It made me so excited to start this part of my reading. And so this is her third book. It is young adult, I believe, and it is in verse. Her first book wasn't in verse and not all the way, it had pieces. I have just been saving this book, I think. Like it's been on my Kindle, she sent me a copy and I never read it because I think I just wanted that perfect moment. And also when I got the cover, I'm like, oh, I'm so glad I had a one to hold in my hands and I can annotate. So, because just look at that, look, <laughs> it's gorgeous. And if you can find a video of her um, cover reveal, it was amazing. Also ignore the nails. Okay, anyway, I could go on and on about her, but that's one book I can't wait to. A Work in Progress is also a novel in verse by Jarrett Lerner. It also um, has like illustrations in it as well, which is what he's known for. I love his illustrations, but I'm really excited uh, to read A Work in Progress. It's a story from his heart and about his, you know, things growing up. And so I'm, I'm glad to experience that and read this. So this one just came out as well, and I'm, I'm ready. Another one that's in verse is Spin by another great middle grade author, Rebecca Caprara. Caprara, Caprara. And this is about Arachne. Her first book was not in verse, kind of like Mariama, uh, but it was so magical. It's called the, the Magic of Melwick Orchard. And I read that to a class and it was just so beautiful. I loved her writing style. So I'm glad I'm ready to experience a book in verse from her. Another one that I didn't expect to be in verse is Suspended by Jason Reynolds. This is a Miles Morales book. And Jason Reynolds does write in verse. However, Miles Morales, I wasn't expecting that. And so when I kind of flipped through, I was like, wait a second. This, I'm going to read this. I'm so excited. So if you don't know, if you haven't read anything by Jason Reynolds, 
do it. The Ghost series is amazing for everyone. It's a beautiful poem book, perfect for gifts, graduation, and um, gosh, his he's just amazing. He's a very talented writer. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. And then the last book and verse that I have here is Francis O'Rourke Dowell's Hazard. Uh, she sent me this book because she's wonderful, and we were talking about my own novel and verse that I'm writing, and she, I was talking about how I'm going to use um, blog or text messages and poetry, and she was like, hello, I wrote like that, and so I'll send you my book as a mentor text. So I'm really excited to read this. I, she sent it to me at like my peak of excitement in writing. I had finished the book. I was ready to revise, and then I kind of just got lost in my own self-doubt. And so now I'm ready to pick it back up and I think I'll start with reading this to kind of get me inspired. Some other books that have already been published that I look forward to reading. Your Plantation Prom is Not Okay. This is by Kelly McWilliams. She is the author of Agnes at the End of the World, which is a great dystopian. And uh, Mirror Girls, which is another fantastic book. She writes about you know, common themes, but set in just different worlds that I love. So it's hard to explain, but I love, I'm so excited to read this. I know it's going to be an important read and she's a very talented writer. Her mom is actually, um, Jewel, uh, Jewel Rhodes Park. Did I say that? Oh my gosh. I completely lost it. But anyway, that's who this author is. Um, Ghost Boys author. So that's another great one. Set Me Free is one that's just been on my shelf for a while and has stuck out to me as something I want to read. Same with Frankie and Bug by Gail Foreman. The Beautiful Something Else has been on my radar from Ash Van Otterloo. And then one of my other favorite middle grade authors, K.A. Reynolds, has Izzy at the End of the World, which is a dystopian and really excited about her new books. Um, she's written fantasy before, so it would be kind of cool to read in different style. And then two books that are coming out this summer, they're Vicious Games and The Quiet Part Out Loud. Both of these have kind of intrigued me by their covers, and I just received them from Simon & Schuster, and so looking forward to reading. Oh, now, books that I've purchased. <laughs> so the we'll start with fantasy. The fantasies I want to read are Keeper of Lost Cities, Exile. This is middle grade. It's a series, and this is book two. I want to read A Magic Steeped in Poison. I started this one as an audiobook and then realized I had the book, and so I stopped, and I'm excited to get back into this world because it started out strong. One of my favorite will buy anything by this author is TJ Klune, and he came out with In the Lives of Puppets. I got the special edition that has a really cool green foil on the cover. And then the inside is like that. I just wish it was signed, but that's okay. One day I'll go see him and get it signed. <laughs> another book is Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. She's another author I love. And I've been putting this one off because I think The Ninth House has been a while since I've read it. And so I want to get a refresher. I don't want to reread, but I want to recap myself. And so it seems a little daunting, but also this cover is super creepy. <laughs> that rabbit is really creepy. And this fantasy book actually comes with like a pre, a book I have to read beforehand. So I got A Day of Fallen Night by Samantha Shannon. And this is the prequel to Priory of Orange Tree, which I haven't read. And it's on my Kindle. So it's not in this stack, otherwise it would be. So I'm going to read the Priory of Orange Tree first, and then I'll dive into this one. So it's, it's a beast, too. But, gosh, that cover, though. When I saw it in the store, I, I had to buy it. I had to buy it. Okay. The Wicked King, To Continue the Cruel Prince. Shatter Me is a series I've been wanting to read, and so I'm excited to start it. It has a lot of parts that I think I will like in a fantasy book. Skin of the Sea, I bought this for myself right when it came out, and I'm excited to pick it up. It's so pretty. These covers are just so pretty. Um, one that totally 
bookstagram made me do it was White Lark by Alex Astor. And so this one, even I even was sucked into pre-ordering it so I can get the pretty pages to put inside the chapters. And so, yeah, I'm going to, I look forward to reading this one. It just seems like a lot of fun. Uh, I hope it's not overhyped, but it's honestly, I'm easily pleased. Okay, so now time for, let's see, I've got one thriller. This is The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James. This book is actually pretty special to me because um, I went to a bridal show, a bridal shower, and instead of gifts, we brought books to swap. And this was actually from the bride. Like, I got her book. And so I just, I'm so excited to read why, like, we even wrote little notes about why we liked the book. Um, on little library card things. So I'm excited to, to read this book and kind of connect with her uh, in a different way, like books and friends. It's in the, the rest of my books are just fiction um, or memoir. And so one of them is a poetry collection called uh, Black Girl Call Home. This one came up a lot on like best poetry to read. And so I'm excited to dive into it and American Street. I've had this one forever and I, I know it's important. I know it'll be good and powerful. So I'm excited to read that one. This one was an impulse buy, the love songs of W.E.B. Du Bois. This one stood out to me because of the title. I knew with W.E.B. Du Bois, it would be about African-American experiences. And then as I'm reading the back, it talks about a lot about family and ancestry and descendants and finding your place and I just I'm really excited to read I like multi-generational so I think that's what this is and so that's why I bought it uh pineapple street has been everywhere so I got it on book of the month club same with romantic comedy this will be kind of my you know lighter book because some of these are pretty heavy even if they're fantasy Wide Out is an anthology of a whole bunch of my favorite authors, Angie Thomas, Nicola Yoon, Nick Stone, Tiffany D. Jackson, and I, Danielle Clayton, and Ashley Woodfolk. And I'm really excited to read this. I got it over Christmas break. And then, you know, why didn't I read it over Christmas break? I don't know. Again, things get put on the shelf and then I forget. Solito, a memoir. Really excited for this one. Uh, I know, again, it'll be heavy, so I think that's why I've kept it to the side, but it's an important read, and again, heard great things, and I'm excited. It's been kind of described as an alternative to American Dirt, my book, because I feel like it's on my shelf somewhere. That had a lot of, yeah, that had a lot of controversy because it wasn't written you know, by an own voices. So I think that's why I was drawn to this one to support own voices. And uh, so need to read it. Warrior Girl Unearthed. I mean, look at this cover. Covers are just so pretty. And this is by the author of Firekeeper's Daughter. And I believe it's a sequel. And it talks a lot about the missing and murdered indigenous women. So important and a great way to access those stories and to have a dialogue about it. And then finally, one that I heard on an NPR like podcast, I think it was NPR, they were talking about Age of Ice by Deep Deep Kapoor. And again, I love multi-generational stories and that's what this is. And it's a, you know, kind of tale of family and it shifts in time and, uh, but the setting is India. And so I'm really, yeah, I can't wait for this book. Ugh. Book of the month. My goodness. I own so many books of theirs from them. So, all right. Those are my 30 books and you know, it's a lot. That's, I wonder how many pages this is. This is a lot of pages. All right.
right, so where do I start? Uh, thanks for watching this video. I This will go from May 29th to September 4th. So I won't film, you know, a full, I think I'll wait and just share my my completion. Uh, but you can follow all of this on my Instagram. Like you'll see me reading books. I'll have my uh, template that I shared earlier kind of going on Twitter and Instagram. And it might show up on my monthly wrap ups. But for the most part, just tune in in September to see how I did and cheer me on, please. And also, if you have a book that you think by golly, I need to start right now, then please comment below and tell me where to start because this is a lot and I'm really excited. Uh, but again, this is a lot of books. <laughs> Happy reading. <laughs>